In this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at the differences between the common earthing systems that you need to know when testing ZE. Although the testing of ZE is similar in each case, as shown in previous videos, there are physical differences between these systems and it does affect the earth path for fault currents. Some of the more frequent questions have included, what is ZE? Which part is ZE and which is ZS? Why is ZE different in TT systems? And is ZE different between TNCS and TNS systems? And this video will address these questions. To begin with, we will have a very basic overview of an installation. We all know how to measure ZS, the impedance of the whole system, but what is it made up of? Notice that I'm using the word impedance now and not resistance. As these are live AC tests, the resistance is called an impedance. Nothing much to worry about, it's still measured in ohms and your test meter knows what to do. And do work safely around live electricity. Although the main switch is turned off during a ZE test, the incoming tails will still be energised. To start with, why do we want to know ZS, the impedance of the whole system from every point of use? So that we can compare the test results to data shown in the wiring regulations and the on-site guide. If the impedance is less than the figures supplied for each fuse or breaker size, then we are assured that the safety devices, the fuses and breakers, will operate as required if a fault occurs. ZS, the whole system, the whole circuit, is made up of two parts. The consumer side of the installation, inside the building, from the consumer unit to the points of use. And this is called R1 plus R2. And ZE is the external part of the installation, from the consumer unit all the way back to the supply transformer. Think of ZE, E, as being E for external. So what are the three common earthing systems? The first system that we will look at is the TNS system. TNS stands for Terror and Neutral Separated. Terror is a Latin word for earth. The earth and the neutral are separated throughout the whole system, as we shall see. This is a TNS system. Starting at the bottom of the supply transformer, on the left, we can see that there is a physical connection between the earth and the neutral at the transformer. But from that moment, from the moment that they leave the transformer, earth and neutral each have their own conductor. From now on, they never share. All the way to the consumer unit, through the consumer unit, and onto every point of use, they are kept separate. TNS, earth and neutral separate. The earth, the neutral and the phase are all separate metallic conductors. For the internal part of the installation, they are very often copper or perhaps aluminium in some older properties, whilst the external part will be metallic alloys for the phase and neutral with a lead sheath for the earth. As shown here, ZE, the subject of this video, is just the external part of the wiring outside the property. All the conductors are separate, from the consumer unit all the way back to the supply transformer and, as we shall see, ZE comes back again on the phase. Back again, does that matter? Well, yes, it matters a lot. If we look at the earth fault path on this drawing, shown by the yellow arrows, the fault current will flow along the earth conductor back to the transformer. But it won't stop there. The fault path continues through the supply transformer where the electrons are re-energised and then they flow back along the phase wire to the consumer unit and the point of fault. This is important because if the fault current did not flow along the phase wire and back through the fuses then the fuse would not blow or the breaker would not trip. No flow through the fuse and the fuse won't blow. When the fuse or breaker operates the fault current will stop and the installation will be in a failed safe condition, awaiting repair. 
As cable technology improved, the TNCS system was introduced. Terror and neutral are combined in part of the system and then they are separated. We say that the earth and neutral are combined in the same conductor and then separated at the intake position to the installation. TNCS, earth and neutral combined and then separated. If we look at this ZS drawing of a TNCS system, it is like the TNS drawing from earlier. But look again at the bottom of the supply transformer. The connection from the transformer to the consumer unit is just one conductor. In the external part of the installation, earth and neutral are combined together. Only at the consumer unit are they separated into two individual cables, never to meet again. The TNCS earth fault path is similar to the earlier system. Fault current will flow along the earth or CPC in the property, but at the consumer unit it then flows along the combined cable back to the transformer. Through the transformer again, along the phase wire, through the fuses and bang, the fuses blow and make the installation safe, just as before. And just as before, the ZE part is shown here. Just the external part of the installation, the outside part of the electrical path. The third type of system that we should look at is the TT system. Terra Terra or Earth Earth system. There is an earth rod at the supply transformer and an earth rod at the installation intake position. But there is no metallic connection between the two earth rods, only soil. And these earth rods can sometimes be hundreds of metres apart. TT is a very much older earthing system, but there are still plenty of them all around the country. And indeed, TT systems are still installed in some locations. Don't think that TT systems are just used in the countryside. Where I used to live, hundreds, possibly thousands of houses in the town centre are on a TT system. That's what was installed many, many years ago. The system still works. Why change it? Looking at the drawing for a TT system, it is very different to the other two systems. There is no metallic earth connection between the supply transformer and the installation earth. Having no metallic connection means that we are going to get a higher ZE reading. With no metallic connection, what happens to any fault current? It simply flows into the general mass of earth. Because some electrons have flowed into the earth at the installation earth rod, there is now an opportunity for other electrons to flow into the earth rod at the supply transformer. They will be energised, they will flow along the phase wire through the fuses and blow the fuses, making the installation safe, if you can get enough current to flow that is. And this is always the difficulty with TT systems. Because the current flow into the earth is low and slow, it is often impossible to get enough fault current flowing to make overcurrent protected devices operate, and this is covered in an earlier video. Again, the ZE part of the TT system is shown here. Similar, but be aware of the difference to the TNS and TNCS systems. So what is a good ZE? What numbers are we looking at for each system? Here is a typical TNCS intake position. Pause the video and take a moment or two to look at it. It is so important to your work that you can easily recognise the different earthing systems. This is a photograph of a tidy installation, but some leave a lot to be desired and take some working out, especially in older properties where things have been added onto other things that were added at other times. Notice especially where the earth comes from. It comes from the midpoint of the cutout box. The supply cable goes into the cutout box and the earth and neutral separation takes place inside the box. This is your big, big clue to TNCS systems. Because it is a more modern cable construction, the maximum permitted ZE is 0 0.35 ohms. This is ZE, a measurement of the outside world from the consumer unit back to the transformer. 
It is often easier to visualise the earthing systems when shown as simple drawings. This is the TNCS system from the previous slide. Now look at this drawing of a TNS system. The big clue here is the great blob of solder just below the cutout box. It is from here, before the cutout, that we take the earth cable into the installation. Remember this layout. The earth may go to an earth terminal near to the cutout, or it may go directly into the consumer unit. They are all slightly different, so look for the solder blob. That is the giveaway. And ZE for a TNS system is 0 0.8 ohms maximum. Again, this is the ZE of the outside world, and because it's older technology, we have a higher maximum permitted ZE, 0 0.8 ohms for TNS systems. Do not confuse TT systems with TNS types. A TT system has no earth going to or coming from the cutout box. Learn to recognise this system. There is a phase conductor to and from the cutout and a neutral conductor to and from the cutout and that is it. The earth conductor is separate and comes from the earth rod. It may go to an earth bar or it may go directly into the consumer unit. The ZE for a TT system is so very variable. Because we are relying on contact with the soil, the ZE reading on the day can be affected by the sun, how dry is the soil, by rain and snow, how damp is the soil, the type of soil, is it rocky, stony ground, is it sandy, is it clay? There are so many variables that all that we can say is that ZE should ideally be below 200 ohms, and below 100 ohms is even better. Because most fuses and breakers will not operate on a TT system, we almost always install 30 milliamp RCDs to give us protection against fault currents. If a 30 milliamp RCD device is installed, then the regulations allow a maximum reading of 1,667 ohms for TT systems. An earlier video covered the reasons and the maths behind this. These three simple drawings are the intake positions and cutouts for the three earthing systems in the video. Please take the time to understand these and improve your ability to recognise each type. And the maximum permissible ZE readings for each type is shown here. This is basic information. You need to get it right. You will be writing this on the test certificates and putting your name against it. A quick look back then. There are three types of earthing system of interest to us. These are TNS, TNCS and TT. Each earthing system has its own maximum permitted ZE value and ZE is a measurement of the outside world. It is important that you easily and accurately recognise each of the earthing systems since this will affect other measurements. The intake position, the cutout equipment Main fuse and meter are the property of the distribution network operator, or DNO, and any defects or damage should be reported to them. We do not have the authority to interfere with their equipment. And that is a brief overview of how ZE is affected by different types of earthing systems. We hope you've enjoyed the video, that we've answered some questions, and that you've added some more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.